Yo, this is Ricky Shane Page, and you are drinking at most. I don't drink, but I've been thinking about it. <laughs> this is drinking at that most. Where we talk about the pros of pro wrestling in the Midwest while sipping on some brews with blessed beers and wrestling. That's my scene. Death matches and Lucha Libre. It's all so mean. I'm a straight up smart goofball, not no kiss ass. I stand tall when it comes to wrestling. I'm the king. I know every move, every fling. Get ready for a wild time. We're drinking at Moe's. Where we don't quit drinking at Moe's. That's where it's at like a power bomb. We hit hard, never flat. Fucking right, we're living the dream. Talking about wrestling, oh, it's a scream. All right, everybody, taking time out before we get this show started. That uh, I want to thank Reaper Apparel for having Dragonimos be a brand ambassador for their clothing line. They got good stuff. They got t shirts. They got hoodies. They got beans. They got lots of great stuff, encouraging everybody to break out of their comfort zone, live their best self, and Hey, it's something I try to live every day. Now, be sure when you go and you're finishing filling out your order, use the code Drinking at Moe's, get 10% off, and the link and the code will both be in the description. Let's fucking go. All right, everybody, welcome Drinking at Mo's. Big Mo here. You know the drill by now. You too, like, subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff because it helps with that pain in the ass YouTube algorithm. Don't forget to leave a review on the audio platforms too. Today, I'm excited to have with me. I've had one member of Red from Revolver on in Alex Colon. I've had another do a short little video promoting the channel in Macklin. Today, I have another one. I'm excited. Ricky Shane Page, how you doing? What's up, man? I'm doing good. I'm glad uh, old Mac Daddy uh, did that for you. Oh, yeah. I like. I meant to have my red shirt on today, but for some reason, it got lost in the shuffle. Well, you time. have a red shirt on. So yeah, I have a red shirt on. So yeah, it, <laughs> it fits. It fits. So first thing I'd like to start off with everybody with is what got you started as a fan, and then what got you deciding to make that leap into the business. Um, I watched wrestling as a kid, like you know, just Hogan and stuff. I was the prime age for that, late eighties, early nineties. So, okay. uh, but then you know, I drifted out of it like everybody else does, and then started watching like the Attitude Era around ninety seven, ninety six, and got back into it. Um, then I watched King of the Ring nineteen ninety eight, and uh, that's the Hell in the Cell with Undertaker and Mankind. Oh God! Um, <clears throat> and when he Mankind when Foley was like falling off the cage like mid air, like I had the thought of like, oh, I want to be a wrestler, and here we are. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I've had some of those thoughts myself, but then got my back hurt in the Navy with some scaffolding falling on me. And yeah, I had to find a different route into getting involved in different parts of the business, which, hey, I'm thankful. I actually not, well, a little over a month ago, actually made my commentary debut. I already got another one set up. So, hey. Maybe the podcast and commentary will be my yeah, my that's way. Awesome! Congrats! Oh yeah, I'm very thankful. My my first main event that I got a call. One half of it was cheeseburger. Nice. And I'm actually, as of recording this, I'm actually recording with him Friday. Awesome! The world that's famous cool. cheeseburger. Oh yeah, one hell of a dude. Pleasure to work with. Very nice so, man. Very nice man. As far as you know, when you got into the business, how did that come about? Because, you know, oh. you, your, your moment that you knew that's what you wanted to do, how did it oh, come about it was, actually doing it? It was ass backwards. Uh, <laughs> I, um, so about a year later from the, so 1999, I started backyard wrestling with my friends. Um, then we did that, you know, 
in the summer because <laughs> Ohio is very cold. Oh, um, yeah, so I'm, we, I'm in Nebraska, so. Yeah, we tried to wrestle in the winter, but it was you know, too much. But um, then like a year and a half later, yeah, around two thousand, late late 2000, early 2001, I started um, training, I'll say, at a uh, local promotion. Um, they None of them were trained. It was just a bunch of teenagers basically renting out a ring and running shows. But they were drawn and they were doing a really big thing because, you know, again, this was – 2000 1999 2000 yeah. 2001 so you know wrestling was hot back then so you know anybody with a ring could get a good crowd uh, <laughs> so i did that for a little bit then uh i ended up getting fired fired from there um so again teenage drama uh yeah. and uh, another friend of mine started another promotion that's very similar to that um called rcw uh and that's my my now tag team partner vince and nothing who i've Ooh. been tag team partners with for 20 years um yeah and then they stopped running shows and i went and trained at mega championship wrestling's uh school which is still open to this day in o'leary ohio and i was trained by chris cole um we started training for a little bit the school closed because they lost the building and then i got i just wrestled and then a year later the school opened back up mm. and i went back and i went every day like four or five days a week for about a year and um but that entire time i was wrestling so I, my story is very weird <laughs> you know there, i have been since starting the podcast i've been informed of you know a lot of people having kind of weird starts and you know getting a, more than even i thought getting started backyard and then kind of going okay i want to do this but get like properly trained. Yeah. And then go about it. So, I mean, but it's always, I love hearing people's origin stories when it comes to all of that. Yeah. So I, I just oh, wanted to wrestle and I was going to do it no matter what. And I was a mm-hmm. poor, you know, kid from Ohio that was pretty much on his own from a young age. And I just made it happen. Hey, <laughs> there. That actually makes me remember back when people would talk about, I had a stretch on my deployment where I was up for four days straight, not even getting to lay down. And people would be like, oh, I don't know how I could, I don't think I could ever do that. And I'm like, it's funny you find out what you're capable of when you don't feel like you got a choice in the matter. And right there, you wanted it, you figured out hell how you had to do it and you went about and did it yep that's exactly what i did all right well you are getting ready for a pretty big show october 18th in taylor michigan kind of a co thing with clash wrestling and holy shit looking at the poster alone like for people that I mean, you, you got to go see this damn thing. On the poster alone, Cruel, Atticus Coger, Alex Cologne, Alice Crowley, Homicide, Crash Jackson, Jake Chris, Jessica Havoc, Judge Joe Drip. God damn. Like, <laughs> talk, talk about a show, a whole show just looking like, as good old JR would say, a slobber knocker. It just looks like the whole damn show. I'm glad you said that. That's what I'm going for. Oh, yeah. So there's been, well, when I put my notes together, there was, I think, only two matches announced. One was the tag team tables match. Yes. Why why don't we go over, we'll go over that one first, since that was the first one that popped into my head. Uh, Philly Marino. uh, Experience. Experience. Okay. I wanted to make sure I got it right versus Light Coast Gym. Now, okay. For those like me, maybe not from that area that might not know too much about these people. What should we expect from that match? Because I mean, tag team tables match. I'm already excited. Um, You should expect great tag team wrestling. Uh, that's exactly why I booked that match. Uh, Phil and Marino are a tag team out of the Cleveland area that have been going up and down 
the Midwest and, and in the East coast out, even out to Chicago and things like that, working for freelance wrestling. They're, they're the, I always say that they're the best tag team to come out of Cleveland since myself and Vincent nothing, um, which I still stand behind. Uh, and, and they're just good dudes and they work hard. Um, recently we, we became a faction at alpha one wrestling up in Canada. And, um, I just really like those guys and I've always want to try to get them on stuff. And Lycos Jim is from the UK. Uh, they're both from they're both from England. Uh top one of the I'd say top top three tag teams in the UK, uh popularity wise and you know uh quality wise, uh, as far as my opinion goes. Um I met um Lycos uh the first Lycos, Lycos one, I guess he is now, or like I'm not sure how it goes. I know it's Lycos one, Lycos two. Mm. I almost said his real name, but I, I no. so, anyway, yeah, I've I've had that happen before on here. Yes. And then I so, have they asked me later, like, um, can you go and like, I know you don't bleep out much, but can you do that? I'm like, nah, say, say less. I got it. Yeah. But, uh, I met him when, uh, in one of my first tours over in the UK around, you know, probably 2016, 17, somewhere around there. Um, and I've seen him grow and, and, and like us too, I, uh, he was like a legitimate child when I met him, like he was like a teenager and he's really grown into like a really, really good, well-traveled professional wrestler. Um, and I think that a lot of times there's no tables in wrestling anymore. Uh, you it's always know, a, like actual, it's always a door. Like, yeah. Y so you know what that is? Now that you think about it. Yeah. I have Normally. a supply of tables. So, um, we will have tape. We have actual, real life, like WWF tables. Nice show. <laughs> nice. Uh, and that's just going to be a good match. And it's you know, the, <clears throat> all the matches on this card are they're going to be good matches, but they're also going to be like they're going to be hardcore matches or or you know, loose rules. As I, I've been saying a lot of like very ECW, like up to the ref's discretion of what what we're going to let fly. Um, gotcha. That's and, the type uh, of show I like. Yes, but I don't want it to be a free for all. No, yeah. well, I want there to be good wrestling. So that's why I booked this tag match because it's going to be good ass wrestling, but there's just going to be a hardcore element. To it. Oh, yeah. No, there, there's something about, yeah, you, you have the loose rules, but you want the people involved in the matches to be actually able to put on a compelling match. So sounds like that one's definitely going to be on that. Now, the you know what you bring up Vincent nothing he's got well he's got one hell of a match com coming at that show with homicide and holy yeah I'm excited like okay I have you know like uh, much like uh, Cody Rhodes had when he first left WWE that list of like I want this go here here wrestle this I got that with people that I want on the podcast. Homicide has been one that's escaped me. It's hard to track down. <laughs> uh, he, uh, Homicide's, uh, we always, I always call him the godfather of indie wrestling. Like he, uh, <laughs> um, people, they straighten up around him. He commands respect. And, uh, we always hit it off. I don't know what it is about me and him. We come from very different backgrounds, uh, but we've always hit it off. And I know that he keeps saying he's retiring soon. I don't believe a freaking word of it because uh, he's an animal. And so I was like, I got to work with him as much as I can while, while I can. And, and before he's gone and I need to get him around other people that can learn from him because he is one of the, if not the best. Uh, I've always been a fan of Homicide. Uh, I used to watch him in Ring of Honor. I have 20-year-old t-shirts hanging up in my closet of, of of Homicide because I love him so much and I was such a fan. He influenced me so, so, so much. Um, and like I said, I've known Vincent Nothing for 20 years. We've been in tag teams. Like I met him when I was 17 years old, so uh, over 20 years now. And uh, I know what a, what kind of match he can have and how physical Vince can get. And, and I think my favorite part about this match is that I think homicide is going to really surprise Vincent and uh, he's going to be, he's going to have a hard time keeping up, but that's why I book the match. Oh yeah. I want him to have a hard time keeping up. I want him to have a fight and I want him to see, and I want all these kids to see what it's like when two dudes have been around for a while and know how to do it, go out there and do it. Oh yeah. You, you, you don't want a squash match for a show like this. Most definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I, oh God, Ring of Honor, that brings me back because, you know, I've had some guests on through there, like the, the SATs that were some of their original ones. I, oh God, trying to remember all the way back. I've had Dutch on. That w- that one actually got me recognition from Bray Wyatt, actually, which was yeah. like, whole- I about dropped my phone when that damn thing came over. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Dutch uh, is the man. Oh, God, I love him. And, uh, oh, former Ring of Honor owner, Kerry Silken. I even had him on. All right. I haven't seen Kerry in forever. God, that one, that one took me off guard because it was one of those that was like, okay, here, it might be a long shot, but let's, let's try. Sure. And then he got back to me and it was like right before Tony Khan bought it. So he was like, you know what? I know I already told you that I'm going to do this. So, just don't advertise it beforehand. I'm like, if that's what it takes, fine. <laughs> nice. So yeah, we've got a lot of good memories and hell cheeseburger coming up. So even more ring of honor memories there. Yes. Now. Okay. This next match I want to talk about has a former guest of mine, Alex Cologne, which, okay. Like I, I mentioned my bucket list. He was the first one I notched off of there. Nice. Him versus Otis Kogar in a unlucky 13 staple gun match. Knowing what I do about the both of them, holy, that one, <laughs> bloody. Yeah, it's going to be great. I'm Alex is, you know, probably one of the best deathmatch wrestlers in the world. And uh, even though I have my issues with Otis and Foforo, uh, yellow, uh, He's 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 climbing up the ranks, man, and he can't be denied. He's been in a lot of tournaments. He's gone through some crazy stuff, and uh, I want to see what he's got up against the best. And and, and and you know what? This is the first time ever match. This match has never happened. I was going to say, I don't remember no. it ever happening. Nope. Any- they, have ne- they have never wrestled one-on-one. This is the first time ever matchup. Um, yeah, and, I, and, you know, staple guns are fun, so it's going to be, you know, th- there's going to have to be 13 staples get used before there's a pinfall, oh. uh, before you can that- have a pinfall. Okay, so that that was one thing I was going to ask because I've heard of the unlucky 13 stable gun match, but I I guess I never really looked into the rules of it too mm. much. So, okay, I'm I'm learning today. I'm learning today. So, yeah, that one holy crap. Like, okay, for a guy that's a fan of deathmatch style like I am the deathmatch hardcore style, that one's going to be a damn treat. For sure. And, you know, having seen, you know, you and him in Revolver at some of the Des Moines stops, like, holy shit. I'm like, holy, I, w- I want to keep my eye out for watching that one. Yes. Now, okay, you got some other people on, you know what, I want to. I actually talk- just announced the match right before. I was going to say, under. you did, what the. The ladder's legal. Yes, ladder's that was the one I wanted to talk about because it has another former guest and Jake Crisp <laughs> in it. Jake Crisp, friend again, a big friend of mine, known him for over twenty years as well. So yeah, it's uh, Zach Thomas, Mark Wheeler, Shane Saber, Jake Crisp, Crash Jackson, and Christian Napier in a six-way ladders are legal scrambles. One pinfall, you just can use ladders. Okay, because that that was. I was in my head thinking that's the way this was going. Ladder's legal. You know, I had it in my head. Oh, maybe just ladders can be used. It's not like a stereotypical ladder match. Yeah. You can just use ladders however the hell you want. Yep. And I'm like, okay, I can see that, especially knowing Jake the way, I mean, not as much as you, but, you know, knowing Jake the way I have god damn that guy he can mix it up regardless of the genre of wrestling oh, like jay jay's a maniac like he's one of the best deathmatch wrestlers out there he's crazy he, he when he does it he goes full in and oh. he's also one of the best wrestlers just on the planet and he always has been and he doesn't get the credit he deserves oh um, yeah he's absolutely killing it still. Like he's been in the wrestling as long as I have, if not longer, uh, we're about the same age. I think he might be a few years older than me, but like absolutely still smashing it in the best shape of his life. Got a six pack, like 
man. Yeah, I definitely don't. Yeah, you and me both, brother. Uh, I always say that he's like the Eddie Guerrero of our generation of indie wrestlers, or maybe the Dean Malenko, like that style. He's just the best. And uh, I really, I can't say enough good things about Jay. Oh, I, I can't either. Like, I, okay, I try not to go too personal, especially on the, you know, shows talking about a specific show, but my first ever show going back after I ended up losing my twin girls, he was one of the first people that I talked to about all of it. And he just like, he literally took that time, like nobody else, mm. me and him. And I'm like, God damn, I was already a fan of him at that point, but that yeah. just like, he's a family man. I mean, he always has been, you know, he loves his family. He loves his children. And uh, I think a lot of the things that he does and what he works for and why he works so hard is because of them. And, you know, I've known them. I've known his oldest since she was in diapers. And now I'm pretty sure she ju just went to prom, not recently. <laughs> so, um, you know, and uh, the same thing. I've known his wife forever. And he's just a family man. And, and that doesn't surprise me that he would sit and talk to you about that. Not at all. Oh, yeah. And hell, I, I've been wanting to get to a show where he's at because, well, it's announced to pretty much everywhere, but my wife and I are actually expecting a little boy here. They're going to be inducing her right after Christmas. So Congrats. pretty excited. And, you know, going back to Jake and, you know, the whole, uh, he definitely is one of those that goes a hundred percent all the time. All we, it brought me up to a, a phrase that I brought up with a, a recent guest of, never half-ass anything, always use your full ass. And I'm like, yep, nope, he's definitely one that full asses it. 100%. 100%. And then some of the other people in there, I mean, I got to bring up Crash Jackson because oh, he's amazing. anybody that, you know, frequents Revolver at least knows damn well what Crash Jackson can accomplish. And he's a, a damn beast. And he's going to be in there with ladders among everything. I mean, okay. He was in there with you at the last revolver show in that monsters brawl death match, which yes, he was yeah, like, I was a little sad. I couldn't be there that night, but I was watching live as it happened. And I'm like, there's the phrase I've heard people talk about with, uh, different, uh, events about, you know, They'll sell you the seat, but you'll only need the edge. Yeah. Like, yeah, I was on the edge of my seat the whole freaking match because, like I said, I'm a fan of deathmatch wrestling. So when I was seeing that, you got you, Crash Jackson, you got Rule in there, which, goddamn, that guy is one intimidating-looking son of a bitch. Mm. And then, you know, you got, uh, well, another guy that will be there at this show October 18th. Atticus Kogar, which you know, you you mentioned, you know, the history with Otis there also has there with him, you know, with the four four zero. Like I, I likened it. I think it was with uh, well, the guy that brought up the idea of having me talk with you tonight, Peapod, brought Man. brought it up because I was asking him about it because I had heard all about it. I'm like, this is giving me vibes of like the NWO days where there was that split with Hollywood and the yeah. Wolf Pack. I'm like, this reminds me of that. And he's like, yeah, pretty much. I'm like, that's a, that's okay. exactly what it is. It's exactly what it was. I was a big WCW kid uh, when I was younger. I loved the NWO. Um, like, I actually think I started watching WCW before I started watching WWE again because you know, during that time, WCW was the most popular one. So, um, so yeah, no, it's a hundred percent what it is. Yeah. I, I always wanted to be in the Wolfpack. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, I, when, when they split like that, yeah, I was definitely a, a Wolfpack kid myself now. Okay. We got, we talked about a few matches. Is there anything else that we can announce? Because I'll have this out the Monday before, Monday, Monday before the show? Monday before the show, so. Okay. Um, is there, yeah, I was going to announce another match tomorrow, so I'll tell you about it right now. Okay. Uh, we're going to have Alice Crowley 
mm. against Jessica Havoc in a doorway to heaven match. Basically, just a bunch of doors. Ah, oh, I was yeah. gonna. I was gonna say when I saw them both on the the event poster, I'm like, oh damn! Tell me those two are going up against. Yeah, them. I really wanted that match for Al. She's uh, you know, part of the muscle of four four zero and. Uh, She's killing it, and I want to put her up against the best so she can learn and get better and prove that she's just as good. And I know Jessica. I've known Jessica for 20 years, and and uh, I know she's a tough broad. And oh. um, I know she'll get crazy. I know she'll get wild. And, you know, she seems motivated. She seems really excited about this show, which was made me super happy. So, uh, yeah, I'm that, that's like one of the ma- – I was – I pushed for that hard. I – because Jess is hard to get a hold of. So I was like texting everybody going, tell her, tell her, tell her, tell her. And then I saw her in a corner. Of the show. I was like, please, please, please. She's like, let me look at my calendar. I'll text you when I leave. And then I left the show and I was like, what's up? And she was like, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> so I was like pushing so hard for that because I really wanted that match for Al. So yeah, oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Those two are definitely what I like to call equal opportunity ass kickers. Like, yeah. it don't matter. Like, intergender wrestling is becoming more of a thing than it was like held back growing up for either one of us. Mm-hmm. And those two definitely doesn't matter. The damn gender you put them up against, they'll go out there and kick sure. ass either way. Yeah, exactly. And that's why, and that's why I want to put them on the show and I want them to be showcased. Oh, most definitely now. Okay. We think we talked about Atticus. We talked about cruel and, the Judge Joe Dredd, that was the other one. So we got some people on the list that, you know, on the poster that we haven't talked about, like, what matches they're in yet. It, are you able to mention that before we get in there? Because I know we talked about ECW sort of vibes and how they they sometimes wouldn't necessarily announce everything beforehand. Yeah, that's kind of that. I, I'm. Same. Uh, okay. Cool. Well, I, I might. Wanna... I don't know yet. Probably. It's honestly. I don't know. I want to see because I, I. I definitely like going to shows and getting surprised. Oh yeah. Um, so that's definitely something that I want to implement in my booking. Um. I might not for this first one. I'm not sure. We'll see. I don't know. Like I like. I like going with the flow and seeing what things are feeling like. And if excitement's building, if excitement's building and building, and people want to know, then I'll, I'll. I'll give them a little more. But. Um, sometimes yeah. I like to reserve stuff. So when they come to the show and they find something that's really cool and, and it happened and they didn't expect it, then they're like, oh man, like I got to go to the show again because something cool might happen. So oh, if yeah. you know anything about me or 440, you know, I love doing Easter eggs and I love doing surprises mm-hmm. and little callbacks. So I'm I, I love it. it. I love it. And yeah, I, I can respect that because you, you build, you build the anticipation and then, you know, if somebody gets surprised and they have that holy shit moment, Yep. Then it'd be like, oh my god! The next time I hear about it, this show happening, I I can't miss it. Yes. And then you you have them bringing more people, and then you just build it that way. That's the plan. All right. Well, I got some random questions to kind of round off. Okay. The episode. Some some might be wrestling related. Some might not be. Some might have absolutely nothing to do with anything we've talked about so far. That's why they're random. So mm. I got two in here that I always keep in the same spot. Other than that, I never really know which questions I'm going to ask you when I'm putting my notes together. Okay. So first one, and this one might be tricky. Craziest in-match moment for you. Uh, what do you mean? Like, a, 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 as in what? Like a crazy. Like a hardcore cra- thing? Like a deathmatch thing? Yeah. Okay. Um. Like, I've heard, like, to give you some examples of what I'm talking about, I've had people talk about uh, this old lady stabbed them in the ass with a needle. I've had, uh, I've had people talk about getting knocked out. I've had, I had a guy tell me about a match he had in Puerto Rico that he literally had on his shirt in English and in Spanish, justice for Brody. And I'm like, oh, Fuck. Um, probably one time in Atlantic City, there was like a riot <laughs> when I won a match. Um, mm. everybody just started throwing garbage and beer bottles and everything into the ring, and then uh, we got out of the ring and like 
we had to kind of like fight our way out of there. Like people were pushing on us and punch, like trying to punch the guys behind me and stuff. And I ended up having to like get a little physical with someone. Uh, <laughs> I got an old, you know, veteran trick I know about to pop somebody in the mouth without it looking like I popped somebody in the mouth. Uh, ah, <laughs> so, uh, hey, you gotta, uh, you I got to defend yourself and get out of the. Yeah. So, yeah, and we so. got out of there. And uh, yeah, that was wild. That's probably one of the craziest things. That's ever happened to me. As far as deathmatch stuff goes, probably I mean when I like felt my face at TOD. Mm. Um, you know, I don't you can't really see it too much, but there's like a huge oh, scar. I can like, like, try oh, to see a little bit of it there. Way, yeah. yeah, it was really, really bad. Um, you know, so like they were talking about I might need sur- plastic surgery and stuff, and um uh, I had a huge scar and it like looked mm-hmm. crazy. Uh, and actually still like to to this day, like this top the top of my scalp and my forehead right here is numb. Like I can't mm. feel it because it hit a nerve in there. Uh, so yeah, those are probably, yeah, probably, that's probably one of the craziest ones. I, I would have to say that would fit because yeah, I hell one that I was just remembering. It was Lloyd and told me about a match in the original ECW where him and new Jack were like told, be careful with the venue. Like don't go. And then they both proceed to end up going through a wall and Paul Heyman's yelling at them after the match. Love that. Sounds, sounds like Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> all right now i've asked a lot of people that have at least dabbled in deathmatch wrestling this what is a weapon you would avoid being used in the match if you had the choice gusset plates mm. yeah those can be a bitch high risk low reward nobody yeah. understands nobody fans some wrestlers they do not understand how gnarly those things are and how absolutely fucked up you can get from them. And sorry oh. to curse, but no, hey, I'm that I'm was very much there's the whole talking like a sailor thing. I'm a navy veteran, so I gotta I, I live up to that. But he like those gusset plates are freaking crazy. They're really gnarly and they can absolutely mess you up. And it, you don't really it, it's not something that comes across on tape. Mm. Um that's kind of a, another thing I want to kind of do with these hardcore shows that i'm doing is i want to i want to like it's getting too crazy Make, and i feel a little, like people are a little different it's getting crazy and people are getting i think people are going to get hurt and it's like they don't understand that that time that life is short um you can't keep that up and especially the rate that some of these guys are doing it it's hard so i i, I want to really focus on story and and build and um feel and vibes mm. show. I, want, I want it to feel cool i want it to feel big i want it to feel epic oh um, yeah and i'm gonna take all the things that i've learned from me traveling around the world and being around the best minds in the business um and i'm gonna impl- implement it on the shows that i'm doing oh yeah and you know i've had that talk with a lot of people that you know Deathmatch wrestling, just like any other form, it is basically just like any other form. You have the, when it's done right, you have those storytelling elements. You, yeah, you have all the deathmatch elements in there, but you, at the core base of it, you got the good storytelling when it's done right. Yeah. So I can sense that's where you're going. And you know what? I'm all for it. <laughs> and yeah, no, this. Gusset plates. I have. I actually have one around here somewhere. I went to a no ring deathmatch show that was ran by Carver, mm. and like it landed near my foot. So I'm like, okay, glad I'm wearing closed toed shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but I I picked it They're up wild. and I got it laying around here somewhere. They're wild. Oh yeah, nope. Those are no joke. All right, you have been around the world uk japan those are some long ass plane rides yeah I, i've been on a couple of them myself what is like a your favorite way to pass time on one of those long ass flights oh i watch movies no all right, all right. Yeah. last time i went to japan i watched all three of the lord of the rings movies and i still had four hours to go <laughs> Yeah, no, that would make sense. Those are some long. Uh, yeah, I'm a big movie guy. I love movies. I watch constantly. Watch movies all the time. I'm I, I'm a bit uh, of an idiot savant with movies. I have a <laughs> a talent of, and it's a very useless talent. But I can usually, if someone gives me a movie, I can say when it came out within a year or two and like who's in it. 
you, you know, I don't have that to that level, but I remember when I was stationed in San Diego at the recreation center, they'd have multiple movie screens and, you know, different movies playing. I'm like talking to the front desk person. I said, you know what? Don't even tell me what's playing right now. I'm going to look. and I bet I can tell you. And boom, got them both right. Yeah, so I like, love movies. Oh, yeah. Now, you know what? Kind of secondary to that. Favorite movie? The Crow. That That's a classic. 1994, Brandon Lee. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. <laughs> One People wouldn't uh, sense this from me, but kind of going off of that, one of my actual favorites, his father, Bruce Lee, Enter the Dragon. Mm, great movie. Oh, yeah. Love it. Other than that, I'm a bit of a fan of uh, Forrest Gump. Like, dude, I, Forrest Gump's the, one of the greatest movies of all time. Oh, dude. I've been to... Also been 1994. To, Wait. 93? <laughs> Ooh, it was it was around it. I think it's ninety four because ninety four is like when uh, all the really great movies came out. Like Shawshank came out, uh, oh, God. Liar Liar came out, Ace Ventura. Uh, oh yeah, Shawshank. Oh, no, I said Shawshank. Uh, yeah, but there's like ninety four is like the greatest year in cinema. Eighty four, ninety four usually. Oh yeah, the yeah. great stuff. And like I've actually been to a few of the Bubba Gump restaurants. Uh, yeah, I've been to one. Oh, I've been to Chicago, Hawaii, Long Beach, and Minneapolis. Yeah, I think it went to one in Orlando, maybe. Okay. And yeah, actually, at the uh, one that's at the Mall of America, I was actually there at the beginning of this year for the New Year's Eve Packers-Vikings game. Oh, right on. And went there the day before. And my wife actually found this in the gift shop. Dr. Pepper shot glass. That's awesome. From Bo Gump. And I actually got the t-shirt to match it. Nice. I've seen it so many times. I can answer their questions before they're done asking them. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah. Great movie. All right. I haven't asked this question in a while, but I figured, you know what? This this is a good one. What would, you, would be one of the first things you'd get if you had what I like to call fuck it money? Like you just have that huge amount of money that it don't matter. You can just buy whatever the hell you want. Um, I would buy a house, a car, and give all my friends a bunch of money. Um, and I'd start, I'd start up a wrestling company. Okay, I can, I can dig that. I can dig that. I know I would definitely. I mean, I already got the house and a car, but definitely a lot of that. Yeah, I would do because I like helping other people feel good, and you know, yep. if somebody's needing help with money for whatever if i had enough money to be able to do that shit by all means yeah exactly i'm the same way all right now you mentioned you don't drink but i have to ask this question because i feel with the name of a show like i have i would feel weird if i didn't favorite drink and like i always tell people just because it says drinking at most does doesn't mean that it has to be alcoholic um like a mixed drink or mixed, just any drink. Mixed drink doesn't. So happen. I love I love Shirley Temples. Okay. That is my that is my go to when I'm at the after party with the boys and we're you know everybody's hooting and hollering. You gotta you gotta make you gotta chill face. So I get me a little Shirley Temple. No one asks me any questions. Um, that's usually my go to. Uh, other than that, I'm Mountain Dew man. I've cold mm. red brother all day long. That's oh, my favorite dude. drink. It's the other. Best. Like yeah, I'm a bit of a Dr Pepper fiend, but if I'm something besides Dr Pepper, yeah. Code Red Mountain Dew. Well, oh, I'm that. in the Dew Crew. I'm in the Dew Crew for sure. Oh, yeah. That's some good stuff. All right. Now, best advice you have for anybody wanting to get into wrestling? Shut up. Can... Fucking shut up. Because all these wrestlers, all they do is run their damn mouths and nobody cares and they don't understand that they're messing stuff up for themselves. Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys this right now. Look, look at me. People are watching what you say. Mm -hmm. And you just got to shut up. Oh, Start yeah. a private Facebook and talk about all the crap you want to talk about. But you're, you're an entertainer in, 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 in a field where you need to have as many people watch you as possible. And these people just want to shout out their opinion and they alienate so much of 
the potential audience and also alienate themselves from certain bookers and promotions and things like that who don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. So shut up and also listen when people are telling you stuff. You don't have to, you don't have to imply it. You don't have to think that they know what they're talking about. Just listen to them. You never yeah. know. You might pick something out. I got to the back recently after, after my match at Revolver. I got to the back. I went right up to Matt Palmer and I said, hey, man, what's up? He said, that match was great. I was like, no, what's up? Anything. He's like, no, don't worry about it. And like, I want that. I've been, I've been wrestling longer than him. But I know that certain people trust him and I, want, and, and I want his opinion and I want other people's opinions on everything. So I always ask people about my match and if there's anything I can do better and things like that. So, yeah, just fucking shut up. Eyes, eyes and ears open, mouth shut. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. You got two ears and one mouth for a reason. No, oh, yep. Would definitely would go a long ways. And yet, you know what? That that's the way to go about it because you know, when you talk about uh asking people about you know things you need to improve, yeah, you want those people that will give you that honest, straightforward answer. Because if you don't know something that you need to improve on, you're just gonna go about thinking you're fine. When in reality, you're, for the lack of a better way to put it, you're fucking up. Yep, exactly. So getting that straightforward advice, great. And you know what? Matthew Palmer, definitely a good guy to be asking about there. Super smart. Knows what he's doing. Knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Going from, you know, where he was, you know, with Revolver first and then the whole. Okay, the Monster Hunter thing was entertaining as hell. Yeah, but, he, care. but now that you know he's back in you know the way that he's going now with the change that he's done, kind of going back to the original, dude, love it. Mm, very cool. All right. Well, before we go, where can people find you social media wise? So if they don't already have their eyes on you, if they don't already have their eyes, hopefully get into this show on the 18th. Where can they go? Uh, Ricky Jane Page on everything. R I C K E Y E Y. That's how my name is spelled. Uh, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Uh, Clash Wrestling at Clash Wrestling for everything. The uh, Clash Wrestling dot net will be the tickets for the show. Simply best twenty twenty four. Um, it's a little tribute to classic indie wrestling that I like, and and um. A bit of a mix of IWA, Mid South, and Ring of Honor, and a little bit of Japanese stuff. I just I'm booking shows the way I want to, and if people like them, come 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 watch them. I think you will. I think uh, I think I know what I'm talking about. But I'm really excited about this show. I, I really am, and like uh, it's going to be the start of a lot of good things and good relationships for Clash Wrestling and and uh, for them to grow. That you know they came to me about this idea and, and wanted to and wanted to. Uh, work with me on this and and i think it was a great idea and i'm really excited and, and i'm really excited to work with jeremy at clash to get this show and show and show everybody and and then just so oh i'll i'll you know i'll give you another exclusive since this is being recorded so far in advance the show will be streaming on iwtv i was about to make sure i wanted to ask about that because we just we just haven't announced it yet but yes it will be stream it will be streaming live um so you'll be able to watch the show also if you're not a subscriber you would there is a pay-per-view option that you can just buy this show standalone from IWT, uh, IWTV and watch it. No subscription needed. Ah, I do um, have the subscription, and I don't believe I have anything going that night. So, yes, I will be watching. Yes, please. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Well, that is about all I have. I can kind of hear my dog rumbling around, probably ready for his dinner. So I better get going. But thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me tonight. I look forward to seeing this show happen because, goddamn, a lot of action to look forward to. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on and letting me plug it. Uh, all this stuff helps, and and I really appreciate it. So please just get to the show, watch the show, October 18th in, in Taylor, Michigan, uh, ClashWrestling.net. And, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you. See, this is where I – the fucking thing with the fucking button. <laughs>